Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Douglas, the teaching pastor of the 456. Thanks so much for joining us this week for our community gathering video. We hope that you are doing well and enjoying these really cold temperatures. Have you noticed like that it's been in the 90s and the high 90s instead of the hundreds lately? And so uh, that's been better. Anyway, glad that you guys are here with us this week. Uh, we have just finished up week three of a four-week series entitled Bible Stories. And this past week was one of my favorite Bible stories as a kid and even now as an adult. And that's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the book of Daniel. And when we were talking about this story, right, you have these three guys who get thrown into a fiery furnace because they refuse to bow down and worship the idol of uh, the Babylonian king. It's actually an idol of himself and they refuse to bow down to it. And, and as they are threatened with death, they are told by King Nebuchadnezzar that he's gonna kill them, he's gonna throw them into this fiery furnace if they don't turn away and, uh, from their God, from worshiping their God and bow down to this image. And, and then they say, you know, oh King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves to you in this matter. And they say that, look, even if the Lord doesn't rescue us, he's able to, but even if he doesn't, we're not gonna serve anybody but him. And it's such a beautiful story. And I think that probably, you know, one of the things that gets emphasized a lot in this story is that God does rescue him. And that's a great thing to emphasize. It's just that the conclusion of that that sometimes people draw is that God's always gonna rescue you from trouble. And we know from all over the Bible that that's not always the case. But what is happening here is that God is working this for his glory. And that's why, here's what we had on tap this past week. Our theology is God works for his highest glory. Like, we, ha we have to believe that, that God is working everything out for his glory. So like, while saving Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had the name of God kind of portrayed and, and conveyed to the world, uh, and, and so their lives being saved made God famous. In, in the same sense, in John chapter 12, Jesus says, uh, as he's about to be arrested and about to go to the cross the following morning, he, he says, Father, my heart is troubled. What should I say? Save me from this very hour. No, it's for this reason that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And the Father answers from heaven and says, I have glorified it and I'll glorify it again. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their lives being spared, glorified God much. Jesus going to the cross, him giving up his life, glorified God much. We also looked at, even in John 21, Jesus talking about Peter, he said he signified the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God, that in Peter's death, uh, God was glorified. And John the Baptist, not John the Baptist, sorry, in the book of John, John chapter 11, Lazarus, Lazarus, his death, and then his subsequent resurrection glorified God. And so God, that was our theology, God is working everything for his highest glory. Our application this past week was our lives are wonderfully spent in pursuit of God's glory. I, I want you to think about that for a minute. We're gonna spend our lives for something, right? And so I spend a, a great deal of my time. I I am in the studio like I am right now. Pierce graciously comes here every week to record these, and I'm in the studio every week painting. Monday through Friday, I'm in the studio painting. This is how I support my family. I, I spend a great deal of time doing this. I spend about a third of my life, I'm told, sleeping. Um, I spend another section of my life eating. Uh, an, crazy amount of time now that you know I mean now that you don't have to read the shampoo bottle anymore a lot of time in the bathroom way too much time um, but we don't need to talk more about that and, and we, we're gonna spend our lives we're gonna spend our lives on something I, I try to spend my life more on reading and studying and learning and becoming somebody who's more and more educated all the time but we're going to spend our lives on something and there's a lot of things you know taking our kids to their sporting events or investing in our fam families all of those are worthwhile pursuits but our lives are wonderfully beautifully gloriously spent when they are spent in pursuit of God's glory. And so like, that's, that is a beautiful, wonderful thing for us to spend our lives on. And that was our application from this past week, that in our lives, in our death, uh, that a life spent in pursuit of the glory of God, that is a life that is beautifully, wonderfully spent. And so we, we looked a little bit this past week at Philippians chapter one, where Paul was talking about how to live as Christ and to die as gain. He says, if I, if I continue in life, to live as Christ. He goes, I'm, I'm gonna be here 
I'm going to proclaim Jesus to you. I'm going to make much of Christ to you. I'm going to make sure that you know who Jesus is. And if I die, I gain Christ. I get to see him face to face. And so Paul knows and understands and comprehends that his life, life or death, either one, is, is spent wonderfully for the glory of the Father. And, and, and that's where we want to be. We want to be people who, in the midst of our sporting events, in the midst of our work, in the midst of our uh, pursuits, and you know, building retirement funds and building an education and teaching our kids how to catch or having somebody else teach us how to catch because maybe we didn't learn really well. I couldn't catch until I was like 25, you know? Um, I, was, I was really uncoordinated. I'm going to go ahead and say that a large part of that was that in my formative years, I had seizures, so I wasn't allowed to do a lot of stuff as a kid. And so let's just pretend that that's what it was, but really it was because I was incredibly awkward. But we're going to spend our lives on things, and that's fine, but let's make it our aim that as we are spending our life, that the highest goal, the end goal of it all, is the glorification of God. And, and so that obviously is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were about, the glorification of God. They were going to make much of God. This wasn't really about them trying to be martyrs. This wasn't really about them trying to say, look at us. This was about making much of God. And then our prayer this past week was, God, give us a desire to glorify you in our life and in our death. God, we we want to be people who, whose lives, as they are spent, as, as we go day in and day out from things that maybe feel mundane to us or that feel like, hey, listen, I get it. You're spending 40 to 60 to 80 hours a week at work. How can you spend 40 to 60 to 80 hours a week at work for the glory of the Father? Like, we feel like sometimes at least, and maybe not all of you, but there have been moments that I felt like, okay, Sunday morning is my time for the Lord. Okay, uh, my Bible reading in this moment is my time for the Lord. Okay, Wednesday night Bible study, that's my time for the Lord. How do we come to the place where we say, look, my life, I want every bit of my life to be spent for the glory of the Father so that we're working for the glory of the Father and we're playing sports to the glory of the Father and we're hanging out with our wives to the glory of the Father. Like, how, how do we do that? And so, Think on those things, ask, continue to ask that God would give us this desire to glorify him in our life and our death. And here are three questions I want you to think about for this week, okay? So just ponder them now, answer them. I hope that these will kind of be some fun questions, but uh, question number one, what in life are you, uh, are you most known for? Uh, and, and so like if people were, people were going to describe you or if somebody was going to say, hey, what's so-and-so most known for? What would other people say about you? Um, I am quirky and weird and, um, and I, I think that people would probably say that if they were being honest and maybe if I wasn't in the room and then if it was Michael or Pierce, they would say that even if I was in the room. Uh, but that's just the kind of friends we are. And so what is it that you're most known for? Uh, I am awkward. I'm a details guy. Somebody's going to say, man, he's, Ryan likes the details. Uh, most people are going to say Ryan has a weird memory for numbers. That's something I'm known for. Uh, so that's the first question. Second question is, what do you hope to leave behind as your legacy? What do you hope to leave behind as your legacy? And, and truth be told that like, I, I hope that what I leave behind when I die is a legacy of people wanting to know Jesus. Uh, having been around me, having sat underneath me as a teacher, um, I hope that, that that's my legacy, that people want to know Jesus more. But think about that. What's the legacy you want to leave behind? And then number three, how might we how might we more deliberately uh, live for God's glory? What are some things practically in my life where I can shift my attitude, not necessarily change my job, not necessarily change my, my extracurricular activities or the extracurricular activities of my kids, but what are some things that I can shift in my life in such a way where my focus deliberately is the glory of God? And so think about that for a little bit. What are some things that you can do uh, that deliberately put the focus on the glory of God in your life. Take a moment, think on those things. Uh, love you guys. So thankful that you're part of our church family and we can't wait to see you soon. Have a good rest of your week. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.